painting in the evening light outside on plein air is a fast moving game. It, here in the Dodoin in summer time, it takes about two hours for the sun to set. <laughs> Watch out, it really speeds up towards the end. Because it's such a fast paint, you'll need to somehow plan ahead for the changing light and the changing colours. In this short video, we'll have a look at the issue of bringing in new colours into the paint mixes. You need to bring in new colours because the light is changing fast and this in turn affects the colour harmony. At this stage I've now finished the blocking. The green hedges have a strong tonal structure which will give stability to the quick painting and the potential chaos that is just about to happen as I endeavour to paint as quickly as the sun is setting. Notice the pinks and the ochres. These are anticipating the warm colours of the evening sunset as the light itself reddens up. Permanent magenta is a bluey red. It's great for pinks and it's also very transparent, which means it's great for glazes. So paint thinly and diluted with lots of white spirits. These will evaporate easily enough in the summer sun and the fresh air. This is the undercoat and it's important that it's more or less dry because you're going to paint on top of it next. Try and mix it actually on the surface with a, what I call a punching white, which is quite thin white. You don't want a thick white. Uh, it's got a lot of sapphire, sapphire oil in it and uh, so you can actually mix the tint of the colour onto it. Now what I want is that, the white house, to be much much brighter than the sky. Judging the exact tonal value of the sky can be difficult. Here the reflected light on the building, a church, is pure high white and the sky is only ever so much darker. So when you compare from this building, you can then ask yourself, is the sky lighter or darker than the building? Sometimes it's very dark, the sky before a storm. Sometimes it's very light on a morning. That's the other advantage of mixing it on the canvas. You can get it bang on, yeah? And of course, it's all the drama painting made visible left on the canvas, the the action of the palette, the paint mixing, being visible, left visible on the painting itself. Cut in, crown, grab off the dribble. Not too much mixing on the page. Okay, now there's some lovely blues coming through, so I'm now going to need to bring in a second blue now. This is a cool green, greeny blue, kind of a magenta hue, uh, Pithalus I9, Windsor. Yeah, you can see it's not the same as the reddy blue as the, uh, the French ultramarine, it's very red. Let's bring in some of this different colour blue. Yeah, there it is. Okay, that, that can be very acidic. Uh, acidic. Uh, if you don't watch it now, look, look, can you see there's a cloud bank forming just above, which is quite exciting, really. Use this second blue for a bit of drama in the, in the sky. It's what I call two blue sky. They they kind of push and pull against each other, which is uh, what you want. You want a bit of colour magic, a bit of colour energy, a bit of colour relationships to spark off some drama but not just any old colour you want colour related to light okay, what's that what's that doing to the pinks because of course uh, this blue really bounces off the pinks a lot and seeing as there's no other blue it, none of the greens in the painting are built with it with this this blue it can run the risk of throwing the whole colour harmony completely off. So 
watch out when you bring another player on pitch because you, your teamwork can be profoundly upset. So whilst whilst we have it on our brush, let's let's mix up a, a darker a darker version of, of it, a more intense version of this. You go, you get some really strong greens on this one, yeah, because it's the one that gives the strong greens, and that is of course the colour of the winter barley, which is always the winter. Cereals are always a very bright nitrogen green. Try and keeping it working in blocks. And let's bring it to the full stop down here. So, at this stage, it's now time to assess. Stand back and look at the painting. We've blocked in the manganese, adding some of it to the blues in the sky and the greens in the fields. Let's have a quick flashback to what the painting was like before the manganese blue. And after. The principle that we are dealing with here is colour harmony and the way to do it is to ask yourself every time you bring in a new colour into your painting how does it relate to all the other colours? Has colour harmony been established? 